Okay, we're ready? Yep. Right, you're in the shot. <laughs> I didn't start it. Church in Sabin. And uh, before you start wondering what happened to Pastor Space, uh, he decided he should, since he's a big YouTube star now, that he had a little work done on his face. Uh, my mother said, uh, mother in law said that uh, I uh, can say I'm from Hollywood now because I've had some work done on my face. Uh, but no, all, in all seriousness, I uh, had a little uh, skin cancer, and so I had that removed on Thursday and got stitched up. So, um, Thank you for all of your prayers, and we um, will begin our, our worship. And so we uh, sang our first hymn, uh, In Christ Alone, and so we'll begin with uh, our invocation. Uh, and we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my pleas for mercy. Because, because he inclined, inclined his, his ears to me. me. Therefore, I will call on him as long as I live. The snares of death 
encompassed me. The pangs of Sheol laid hold on me. I suffered distress and anguish. Then I, I called on the name of the Lord. O Lord, I pray, deliver my soul. We, become, we come before our Lord, confessing our sins and seeking his forgiveness. Let us take a moment of silence now to reflect on our sinful nature and just our need for our Savior. The Apostle Paul has called us to live life through the Spirit, not according to the flesh. We, we confess we have, we have not put, put to death, death the things of the flesh, and have sinned against you by what we have done and left undone, and we, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. Gracious is the Lord, and righteous our God is merciful. The Lord preserves the simple. When I was brought low, he saved me. Return, O my soul, to your rest. For the Lord has dealt bountifully with you. For you have delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. The Lord will open the graves and put his spirit within his people, and they shall live. God in his mercy has given his son to die for you and through his death brought life and immortality to light. And as a call ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. And let us pray. Almighty God, by your great goodness, mercifully look upon your people that we may be governed and preserved evermore in body and soul. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
In this, our last Sunday in the Lent, season of Lent prior to Holy Week, we are given the truth of the life of the Lord has come to bring. Ezekiel sees a vision of dry bones brought to life by the breath and power of God. In the epistle of Romans, in the epistle to the Romans, we hear of our life in Christ through the Spirit, and in that life to live not of the flesh. In the Holy Gospel, we hear the greatest sign through which our Lord foreshadows his own resurrection, bringing a dead and decaying Lazarus back to life, which also foreshadows the resurrection and eternal life for all who believe. Our Old Testament reading is from Ezekiel chapter 37. The hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me out in the spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the middle of the valley. It was full of bones. And he led me around them, among them, and behold, there were very many on the surface of the valley, and behold, they were very dry. He said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy over these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied there was a sound, and behold, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone, and I looked, and behold, there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet, an exceedingly great army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are clean cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus the Lord says the Lord God, Behold, I will open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people. And I will bring you into the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am the Lord, when I open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people. And I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you in your own land. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. I have spoken, and I will do it, declares the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle reading is from Romans chapter 8. Therefore, there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the Spirit has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do. By sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, he condemned sin in the flesh, in order that the righteousness requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on things of the Spirit. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. For the mind that is set on flesh is hostile toward God, for it does not submit to God's law, indeed it cannot. Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. You, however, are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if in fact the Spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the Spirit of, whom, of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Good morning out there, uh, all children, and children at heart uh, as well. 
Uh, I brought with me this morning a, a bottle of tears. Um, this is my tear bottle here. And uh, David, in, in a psalm, asked God to put his tears in a bottle. And no, these are not real tears. They're just water. Um, but I want us to, to think about, um, do we ever cry? Do you ever cry out there? Raise your hand if you have ever cried. Oh, I see. Raise your hand. I know you've cried. Okay. Um, we, we have all cried. And, and sometimes, wh why do we cry? Well, well, sometimes we cry when maybe we fall down and, and skin our knee. Or maybe we cry because our feelings have been hurt. Our brother or sister took something that, that was ours and, and we got mad. Uh, maybe you got a shot. Pastor cried this week when they were sticking needles in, giving me shots, and, and it, it was hard. It, it, it hurt. Maybe we've, we've cried when uh, a friend of ours leaves or, or a loved one has passed away. Uh, we all cry. And did you know that, that Jesus cried too? Jesus cried um, a couple times throughout Scripture. Uh, he cried when, when he was praying. Uh, he cried when he, when he saw Jerusalem and, and what it had become. But in our, our reading, in just a little bit, we're going to hear about how Jesus wept. Uh, Jesus cried when uh, he learned of his good friend Lazarus, who had died. Uh, and, and as Mary and Martha, uh, the brother, or the sister of, sisters of, of Lazarus, are, are crying, Jesus had, had compassion on them and, and was uh, deeply troubled by it and, and cried. And, and isn't it good to know that, that we have a Savior who who goes through the same emotions that, that we do, understands what it's like to be sad and, and to cry. Uh, Jesus cried too. And so it's comforting to know that we have a Savior who, who can uh, relate to us, but also a Savior who can comfort us. And so when we are sad, maybe we're sad because we've been away from our friends for a while now as, as we've been away from school. Maybe we miss our teachers. Maybe we miss um, being at school. Maybe not quite yet, but maybe you will. But Jesus can relate. Uh, maybe he's he, he crying uh, as well. And so Jesus and God know about our tears, uh, and, and they, they cry as well. But as we will hear today, Jesus comforts us. Uh, he walks beside us and, and gives us um, the knowledge that he is with us. And so when we are sad, know that you are not alone, that, that Jesus is with us uh, and he comforts us. And, and hopefully that can give you some, some comfort uh, as, as we continue with this uh, shelter in place, this new reality that we are in. Uh, and we pray that soon we will be uh, together with our friends, together with our, our congregation. And so let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for uh, just relating to us, crying with us, Knowing that uh, when we are sad, uh, you understand what it's like to be sad. Uh, and just remind us that you are with us. You will comfort us, uh, and you will walk beside us. And we will get through this together. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Let's say our verse together. And if you want to stand from your couch or wherever you are, you may stand as well for the reading of the Holy Gospel. I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 11th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha, it was Mary who anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was ill. So the sisters sent to him, saying, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, This illness does not lead to death. It is the glory of God, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. 
Then after this, he said to the disciples, Let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now seeking to stone you. And are you going there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? If anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble, because he sees the light of the world. But if anyone walks in the night, he stumbles, because the light is not in him. After saying these things, he said to them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I go to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will recover. Now Jesus has spoken of his death, but they thought that he meant taking rest and sleep. But Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus has died, and for your sake I am glad that I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. So Thomas, called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. And when Jesus came, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles off. And many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them concerning their brother. So when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him. But Mary remained seated in the house. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he leave, live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is coming into the world. When she had said this, she went and called her sister Mary, saying in private, The teacher is here and is calling for you. When she heard it, she rose quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still in the place where Martha had met him. When the Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary rise quickly and go out, they followed her, supposing that she was going to the tomb to weep there. Now when Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come with her also weeping, he was moved deeply in his spirit and greatly troubled. And he said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man also have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, deeply moved again, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone lay against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, by this time there will be an odor, for he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I know that you always hear me, but I said this on account of the people standing around, that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said these things, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The man who had died came out his hands and feet bound with linen strips, and his face wrapped with a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what he did, believed in him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Christ. We continue with our next hymn, Alas, Alas, and Did My Savior Believe. Thank you.
grace, mercy, and peace to you from God, our Heavenly Father, and through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who understands our emotions, can relate to them, who cries along with us. Be with you all and comfort you. In his name, amen. Well, a question has been asked of me through Facebook Live, and the question is, Pastor, why aren't you wearing your dress? <laughs> well, we do weird things in quarantine. And if you're comfortable on your couch, Pastor can be comfortable up here. Um, and so, if, if you want me to wear my dress, you can just make comments here and, and let Pastor know what you think he should be wearing. I might be getting myself into trouble with asking that question. Um, if you want me to wear my dress or not, uh, you can comment on that. And so I hope I answer your question there, Bella. Uh, and if not, um, just say, give me more, and, and I'll see what I can do for you. This morning, we are, our sermon is going to be based off of the gospel text, uh, the story of uh, Lazarus and, and Mary and Martha and, and Jesus raising Lazarus. And I want to start off by saying I think one of the greatest inventions for TV watching is the pause button. Especially if you are a, a sports fan and, and want to, to, to not miss any action and you want to get something, you can, can pause it. Or if you're wondering about a stat or something, you can pause it, go back and, and look at it. Look it up and, and, and come back to it. Or you can... Reflect on something. Maybe you're watching a show and something profound comes on and you want to think about what it is or what, what might happen. And so you push pause. You can reflect on it and you can, can ponder it. And that's what I want us to do this morning with our text for, from the Gospel reading, from, from John's Gospel and the, the story of, of Lazarus rising. Pushing pause. Pausing for a moment and enter more deeply into what is happening in this text. I want us to pause the story to begin with. We hear that the, the word comes to, to Jesus about, about Lazarus. Martha and Mary sent it to, to Jesus, knowing that, that he could probably do something about it. They, they believe that he is, is the Son of God, and, and they that he could do something to help their brother. And so word gets to Jesus about the, the illness of, of Lazarus. Well, sometimes we, we wonder what the disciples were thinking when they, they stay a little longer. And now they're going to go and, and see Lazarus, for he is, is dead. That first moment when, when Martha speaks to Jesus, I want us to pause there. As, as Martha sees Jesus coming and goes to speak with Jesus. The story becomes not about the rising of Lazarus, but about Martha. What does Jesus do to Martha? Jesus comforts Martha. This scene is maybe Jesus comforts Martha on the road to resurrection. Reminding Martha what is about to happen. What it really is all about for us. We are all on this road to the resurrection. So now, Jesus knows that, that Lazarus is dead. And now, he appears. And Martha here is, is sad, sorrowful, weeping that her brother has been dead now four days. They have laid him to rest. And they are mourning him. And so now Martha comes to Jesus. She's standing there on the road with Jesus, looking to the past, looking to the future, wanting to be anywhere but here. 
wishing she could be somewhere else. Martha knows that if Jesus had been there, her brother would have lived. Martha knows that I know that, that he will rise again in the resurrection. She understands this. It's not the end. There is something better to come. But what could have been and what will be do, what will be done, did not change or cannot change what is going on right now. Martha's brother is dead. Jesus was late. And her life is filled with sorrow. This moment for Martha, I think, is familiar for us. It is where we spend most of our lives, on this road to the resurrection. When we look at the past, we know what could have been. When we look to the future, we know what will be for us in Jesus. But it's the now that we wrestle with. It's the now that we stand in, the now of, of suffering, of pain, of sorrow. What could have been and what will be does not change what is going on right now, presently in our lives. And this is where we're at today. We are in the midst of suffering in the world. Fear of the COVID-19 virus. Being in isolation, hearing the stories of the hospitals where doctors and nurses have to choose whether a patient lives or doesn't because they are short on ventilators and supplies and staff and beds. There's the fear of, of being alone, dying alone. People wondering how their loved ones are doing. There's great suffering going on. In the world. People are losing loved ones. People are in isolation. People are in fear. I think that's what's great about the shortest verse in the Bible, Jesus wept. Jesus is weeping along with us. Jesus knows that we are suffering. Jesus knows what we're going through. He can relate. He can empathize. But just as Jesus comes to Martha and comforts her on this road to her brother, Jesus meets us on this road of suffering too. Jesus comforts us. Comforts us with his word. And that's my prayer for you all. That instead of being in fear and, and anxious, which we all are, we don't know what will happen, what tomorrow will bring. But we do know that we are not alone. We have a Savior who walks with us, who comes to us to comfort us, to put his hand around us and say, we're going to do this together. But he also points us, as he points Mary, Martha, and Lazarus to that future promise. Future promise of the resurrection. Yes, Jesus raises Lazarus from the dead, calls him out, and he is alive giving us a foretaste of what is to come, where the dead will rise and we'll be made alive again. But until now, until then, we still live in a sinful world. But we do have a hope. A hope that Jesus is the resurrection and the life. And if you believe in him, you shall not perish. You will have eternal life with him. We see Jesus for who he is. The Son of God. The resurrection, resurrected Lord and Savior. Who defeated death. 
And on that third day, that tomb was empty. And he walks out. Take comfort in knowing, one, that Jesus understands what we are going through. He weeps along with us. God mourns his fallen creation as well. But also realize that he never gave up on us, which is why Jesus came into this world, so that we can be together with him again in a creation that God intended his creation to be, in harmony, free from suffering, free from pain, free from stitches, free from death. But most importantly, in harmony with him. We will see Jesus and God face to face. And there will be tears of joy, tears of excitement, tears of happiness. Because we will be with him again. Take comfort in him. Jesus walks with us. We will get through this. How do I know that? Because Jesus is with us. Jesus brings us to eternal life. Life with him. And so rest in his love. Rest in his arms. Know that he comforts you through this time of uncertainty and suffering. Jesus loves you. Amen. We now continue in our service by joining together and singing our next song, My Heart is Filled with Thankfulness.
And we join together in confessing the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. We join together in the prayers of the church. The resurrection to eternal life has come to the world in Christ Jesus. Now let us pray for the deliverance of all who belong to Christ by faith and for all for whom he died and rose again. O oh God, as you created everything out of nothing by your mighty word, so you have brought resurrection and eternal life to light by the mighty command of your Son, Jesus, who went through death and emerged victorious over death. Help us to learn from Ezekiel's vision that death comes when we lose faith and the life we gain through the Spirit. Receive our praise and thanks for your gift of eternal life. Help us to live as your resurrection people, bringing the might of your word to all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, help us continue to recognize our sin, our need for repentance, and our dependence on our Savior. Help us learn from Paul's letter to the Romans to continually put to death those things of the flesh that lead us astray, that we may be fed and led by your life-giving spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The sake of your word, by which you cause repentance and faith to issue from human hearts, guide the leaders of nations, communities in our world to pursue ways of peace and tranquility among people, that your word be preached for the salvation of all. We pray, Lord, for all those um, who've been affected by the COVID-19 virus, those who are in hospitalized, those who are quarantined at home, and for the leaders who are uh, acting to get help to those in need. Be with the doctors, be with the nurses, and all those who care for the sick. And Lord, be with us all. Give us that comfort that only you can give. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who are sick and infirm, disabled or troubled. Breathe your life-giving spirit into all in need, that hope, comfort, and peace in you may be theirs. Remind us that our ultimate healing is in the resurrection of the dead and the life everlasting. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray. Trusting in your mercy, O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We join together in praying the prayer our Lord has taught us to pray in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. 
And now receive our Lord's benediction. The Lord will bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and grant you his peace. Amen. We conclude with our final hymn, My Hope is Built on Nothing Less. Blessings.